So we're going to talk here about vectors. Um, basically, you're going to use vectors, physics, I don't know, physics, statics, dynamics, circuits, forever and ever and ever and ever. If you want to be an engineer, you absolutely have to understand vectors. Okay, now vectors have two main components. One of them is magnitude. And the other is direction. So, for example, if like it says here, um, it's important to know that gravity acts down and not up. So if you're going to draw a gravity vector, your gravity vector would look like that, right? Because it's gravity, it goes down. So we'd say, you know, I have a, you know, 50 pound force acting down because that's my, um, what's it called? Vector it has a magnitude and a direction. So 50 pounds down would be a magnitude and direction. Um, if we have any cake fans out in the audience, um, you remember, if you might remember the song, he's going for distance, he's going for speed. Those are both um, scalars, which have only magnitude. Um, if you were going to restate that song as a vector, you would say he's going for displacement and he's going for velocity. So those are examples of vectors. Um, a lot of times it's pretty common for professors to go through and have you list kind of the different, what some of these different ones are. So um, a scalar has just magnitude. It would be things like, um, like I said, going, going the distance, um, speed. These are scalars. Um, another scalar might be, you know, um, a quantity. So like I have six oranges. That's a scalar. Um, and again, a vector would be like displacement. So like I'm going 30 miles west or something like that. And, you know, you draw it as an arrow 30 miles west. Displacement. Um, another vector would be velocity. Another vector would be acceleration or a force. Those are all vectors. Um, area, volume, those are scalars because they're, they're magnitudes that you can count stuff, but it's not going anywhere in particular. All these are going somewhere. You have an acceleration in a direction, you have a force in a direction. Okay, so scalar versus vector. That's a good way to get started. Now, if you have graph paper, I recommend using it while you're taking notes for this particular lecture because we're going to be drawing lots of pictures. So the first thing that you want to have some practice with is um, drawing a vector. So let me draw you in a vector, and it's going to go from here to here. Okay, uh, let me make it a little different. I'll go from here, we'll go one, two, three, and one, two, three, four. Okay, so we'll call this vector A. Okay, it has, yeah, I did that on purpose. Um, it goes three, right and four up okay so that's a vector um what can you do with this you can do all kinds of things with this um say this was representing a force i could say it's it, the force is going up this could be a velocity i could say i'm going up i'm going you know three east four north three miles east four miles north there's all kinds of ways that you can interpret this in real life um, for the purposes of this class i'm just going to have you manipulate vectors not really do anything um real, I guess, with them. I just want you to kind of manipulate them algebraically to make sure that you know how to do it. Okay? So there are some things that you can do with vectors. So things you can do with vectors. Um, you can scale them. You can add them. You can, uh, you can move them around. Kinda. Um, the big thing on this is you can't change. Yeah. Come on. You can't change their orientation. So the way vectors work is I can take this vector here and I can go like this. And I can move it around a little bit. But I can't like spin it, but I can move it around. Um, you can add them and you can subtract them. You can do all kinds of things with them. Okay. 
can subtract them. You can do all kinds of things with them. The thing that we're going to focus on initially is the first one, which is to scale them. Ooh, not that. <laughs> it's to scale them. And by scale them, I really mean that um, you can stretch or smush them. Okay. So let's take this guy A here again. And A went 1, 2, 3 over and 1, 2, 3, 4 up. Okay, so that's A. If I wanted to, I could write 2A, where quite literally I would draw A. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 1A. And then I could go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's 2A. So like quite literally, it's two A's. Um, so I have A, I can have two A, I can have one half A. So instead of going three over, I'd go one and a half over. Instead of going four up, I'd go two up. I have one half A. Let's get this over just a little tad bit there. Um, ah, weird. I think that's what I meant to do. Why does that look weird? I know, because it doesn't look like I really want two up. Um, two up. There. Does that look a little bit better? A half and over, or one and a half over, two up. Um, so let me write these down. So I have three over, four up. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six. 6 over and 8 up. So half an A would be 1.5 over and 2 up. Kind of make sense? Um, I could also write, say, negative A. Negative A, I would start, I might start a little bit higher on my graph paper just for convenience. I go 3 left and 1, 2, 3, 4 down. That's a terrible picture. That's still pretty bad. Like that. Three left, four down. Okay, so maybe instead of over, I should be saying right. Three right. Three right, or three left, four down. That would be minus A. And if you want to go really crazy, um, you could say, oh, I don't know, minus... 3a. You're, I guess we're really desperate for fun. Um, and that would basically be, again, thinking about the original, you can look at it if you want. You can multiply all those by negative 3. So instead of going 3 right, I would go 9 left. Instead of 4 up, I would go 12 down. You see how that kind of is matching up? So 3 right times negative 3 would be 9 left. 4 up times negative 3 would be 12 down. You could also do it by drawing it in. So I can start here and I can count. I need some more space probably. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that should be 9 left and 12 down. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, 9 left and... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 down. Perfect. Okay, so those are your all these different scaly thingies that you can do with vectors. Now, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, it's not ideal necessarily to be constantly writing 3, right, 4, down, whatever. So we actually have mathematical notation for it, and it's called a unit vector. Basically, um, if you want to think about it this way, on a regular graph paper, anything going this way is called in the I direction or the I hat direction. I hat. They literally say I hat. Anything going this way we call J hat. I hat and J hat. Now, they are technically unit vectors. So actually these have a length of 1. So let me draw these a little bit prettier. 
I just like to introduce concepts first and then explain them later. So that would be I hat. This would be J hat. Unit vectors have a length of one. So what's neat about this is we can use this I hat J hat notation to simplify uh, the way we write vectors out. So instead of saying three right, four up, we could say three I hat plus four J hat. So I hat means right and J hat means up. So three right, four up. So see if you can write the remaining ones that are on the page in um, I hat J hat notation. Pause the video, try to make sure you understand it, because it's always going to make more sense when I'm explaining it than when you actually do on your own. Okay, well, we'll pretend you did that. Um, so 6 right, 8 up would be 6 right, 8 J. So 6 I hat plus 8 J hat. Um, this would be 1.5 I hat plus 2 J hat. This would be 3... Oh, sorry, this would be negative 3 i hat minus 4 j hat. Does a negative make sense? It should, because it basically means you're going the opposite direction, right? I'm going 3 left, so I have to go minus 3 i hat minus 3 i hat minus 4 j hat. This one over here would be minus 9 i hat minus 12 j hat, like that. Okay. Now you might notice, if you're being particularly clever, that if this is A, 2A is literally twice those elements. So 2 times 3 I hat is 6 I hat. 2 times 4 J hat would be 8 J hat. So if A is 3 I hat plus 4 J hat, then 2a, ah, not that 2a, come back 2a, then 2a would be twice that, 3i hat plus 4j hat, giving us 6i hat plus 8j hat, which is exactly what we got right there. Okay, so like the reason we do this in vector notation, um, well, most of physics would be impossible without it. But um, it also is just a very, very convenient way to um, stretch and do all these various things with vectors. So the first skill really is to just be able to redraw vectors. Um, it's really important to me that you understand visually what's going on. So, you know, you're going to want to look at problems where you're literally drawing in the arrow twice, you're drawing in half the arrow, or drawing in the arrow backwards. Um, the most common mistake for like trying to do a negative A would be to draw it this way. But remember, it's not just the upy downy direction that's reversed, it's the lefty righty direction that's being reversed. So if you're pointing this way, then quite literally you just put the tail, I mean, I meant the head on the other end of the arrow, and that gives you negative A. Okay, so just remember to draw the, the head on the other end of the arrow to make that come out right. So let me throw a couple more down here just to make sure that you can, can kind of get them. So Let's see, let's go. Let's do that and we'll call that one B. So for a couple of tries, see if you can write minus B, see if you can write 2B, and see if you can write negative 1 half B. So try drawing it and then write it in its um, IJ notation. It's going to be called unit vector notation. Yeah? Daddy. He's Daddy. 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 Um, instead of going 4 over and 5 up, I'm going to go 2 over and 2 and a half up. But it's not, it's not B. It's not a half a B. It's actually negative a half B. So I just have to put it in the backwards direction. Okay, let me try to draw this a little bit prettier. It's bothering me. 
Okay. So now if I want to write these in IJ notation, the first one is the first one is um, four i hat plus five j hat. So this one will be minus four i hat minus five j hat. This one would be eight over and ten up. And this one would be minus four over and minus two or two down. Okay. Now you can have vectors that are pointed weird directions. So, you know, if I had a vector that was pointed, say, like this, that's completely legitimate. So, like this one here would be going, um, let's see, one, two, three left. So, minus three i hat, and then up one, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six up. So, six j hat. So, you can have like pluses and minuses. It just depends on the direction the vector is. Okay. So, um, in general, you know, just be prepared to take vectors, scale them, and to be able to, um, to indicate, um, indicate their i hat, j hat notation. Now, just to let you know, there is a third axis. Well, I'm sure you know that, but um, if this is your x, y, z axis, um, you can have a your unit vector i hat, j hat, and the one in the z direction is called actually k hat. So this is i hat, j hat, and k hat. So you can have a vector that's in 3D. They're just a lot harder to draw, so we usually don't. Um, but say I, let's just pretend I did. Um, if I had a vector that was like, I'm not very good at this whole straight line thing. I could say it was, uh, let's pretend this is three that way. And uh, five over and two, six up or something like that. So if you went three down, oh, I didn't really need to draw that little thingy on it. Thank you, I totally meant to delete that whole line. So if say you went three down, five over and six up, kind of like that. Then you could have a vector from here to here. Um, again, it's just kind of hard to draw in 3D. But that vector A would be, if you can see that very well, that vector A would be three I hat plus five J hat plus six K hat. Okay, so you can do these in 3D. And honestly, this is probably where I, J, K notation becomes the most useful is because drawing um, vectors in 3D is basically um, unwieldy at best and impossible at worst.